well. Or usually with, when I spot something I want to paint, I'm just out doing my everyday chores. I'm not out looking for sites. I'm out shopping, picking up the kids, walking the dog or something. And we go shopping a lot up in Sydney Road. There's a big shop there, Mediterranean wholesalers. Get cheap tomatoes and pasta and stuff. And there's a big car park out behind Sydney Road and I parked in there one day and was walking over to the Mediterranean wholesalers and saw this old building sitting there, obviously unused. And I thought, what a great corner with the grill down and the funny deco curved design, all the bricks. So I decided that I had to do a painting about it and um, went home, got the camera, took some snaps, did a few little drawings and then set about the task, which was quite good because um, once I'd drawn it up, I was going through a busy stage in my life with other things going on and I could get back to it and I could leave it and come back to it whenever I wanted to because I just had to follow the, the pattern through. So it was a really convenient thing to paint at that particular time in my life when I was busy with other responsibilities. And um, as you can see, I like painting the bricks because you can um, play around, you can build the wall literally as you do with bricks. You can play around with the colours, the tones, the graffiti and alter the shape of the building so it fits the, the canvas. And, um, and also put a bit of a message in there, I suppose, that sort of says, you know, manufacturing is on the way out here. It's all going offshore and all these old factories are being converted into warehouses and inner city living. Thus the uh, two architects there going over the plans. And also thus the, the mail and everything piled up out on the street. And, uh, when I, I painted this about two years ago, when I went there the other day to do some more shopping, um, that car was still there. That green car was still there. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> This um, block of flats in Ligon Street, Brunswick, um, it's, I'm surprised how many people recognise this building, especially in, in real life. It's a lot sort of more subdued than it's come out here. Well, I tried to paint it in a subdued manner, and so it would look faded and old, but for some reason it's come up all bright and sparkly. But um, I was going along Ligon Street one day, and I must have passed, passed it hundreds of times without seeing it and then bang, it sort of stood out because the sun was setting behind it and the, the two brick walls on either side were hemming it in and it looked so out of place in this sort of industrial street. So I said I must do a picture about that and, and um, went, I made a little sketch, I stopped the car and made a little sketch. But the uh, thing I like about painting blocks of flats is, because, is that you can um, you, you can wonder about the lives inside, behind the windows, when so many different people live in the one building. And, and you can give each section its own individual characteristics, like as, other, as people would give their own flat but its own style, with curtains and plants and, and 
the foliage out the front. And then I put a story in, just a man with his prescription after coming from the doctor's surgery. Gives a bit of focus, rather than just a portrait of a block of flags. When I painted it, it was grey and it was shabby and it had lots of old lettering and it had a sign up the top that was said mechanical repairs but it was really wonky with all the letters all falling off. And um, since then, it's as if they've seen the painting and they're ashamed that they haven't seen the painting. And they've completely coated it, covered it up, made it all nice and put a brand new sign up the top um, which is, it says the same thing but it's nothing like how it was in my painting. one day and it's in a part that's more neglected and stumbled across this corner thing here and the big sign was all falling down that said mechanical repairs and it was all falling down and I thought wow that looks fantastic so I thought well yet again another picture out of this one and went home and when I was painting it um, I didn't really want to write all the things that the sign said because they're all a bit boring so I got out my old Holden manual and and decided to choose some of the parts to put on the pictures instead. And I had a lot of fun painting all the little, I thought they looked like faces, all these little parts, little monstrous faces. I enjoyed doing that. And then when I was going past there the other day, I couldn't believe it, I didn't recognise it. They've painted the whole thing bright purple and they've completely fixed the sign and it's a modern sign. And so this is no more. This is a record of how it was just a little while ago. butcher shop in Carlton we go there it's a very amusing place to be because the little Italian guys that run it are very cheeky and it's always a bit of a joke in there and what drew me towards wanting to paint it was the green and orange signs I thought that they must have been there for a long time I really liked the way that the green clashed with the orange and the big bold black writing and um, went about making the picture and then when I finished it, I went in a couple of weeks later and they completely painted the whole butcher shop white. So this is another record of how it was. Not till not so long ago.
shop in um, Russell Street in a very gutsy part of Melbourne, a bit of old Melbourne. And, it, and it, it's quite humorous because he advertises himself as being a watchmaker and jeweller, but when you have a close look, I'm pretty sure it's just a pawn shop. And it's quite a good part of Melbourne to have a pawn shop because there's quite a lot of needy people around there after a quick buck. And um, it's just the grey part of Russell Street really appealed to me. And it's nestled in between a pub and a Chinese restaurant. And now it's empty. When I went by the other day, he's packed up. So I guess it's not me causing things to close. It's really just a comment about the ever-changing world, the ever-changing city. Always something new coming along and something closing. Block of flats before, but from another angle. Um, I really like the generous, chunky brickwork and the curvy design. I don't know if it's deco or what it is, and also the contrast of the foliage against the brick. It was fun to paint and, and have a bit of a play around with. And the, the characters loading up their van are based on a group of young people who rented a house a few doors down from us in North Carlton. They were a, obviously an aspiring young rock band, took themselves very, very seriously and packed up to go off to their weekend gigs. Very earnest about it all and I wish them all the best and hope they do become the next big thing because I think that's what they were aiming to be. Anyway, they moved away and I decided to put them in this picture to give it a bit of a story rather than just a portrait of this particular block of flats. railway cutting railway line in North Carlton, Parkville. 
where bicycle people and dog walkers and everyone goes. There's a lot of brick work, as you can see, but I decided to approach it a bit differently this time. And rather than paint graffiti on the wall, try to incorporate the, the colours of graffiti into the bricks. So it's actually come out looking quite um, pixelated, digital. I wanted to have the feel of coming through one tunnel and of course there's another tunnel in the distance which I uh, will walk to but that's why the, uh, it's almost like a frame of shadow because um, the viewer is standing in the tunnel looking out at the brightness of, of the day. This painting is a shop in the town of Hay. A couple of years ago we went on a camping holiday and we drove to Hay because of its name, because of Bill Hay. And there, that's Bill Hay in Hay with our dog. And it was a very charming, funny old shop that's obviously had a lot of lives. It's obviously been a building shop, supply shop, an estate agent. And now it's obviously something like an op shop because of the all the lovely frocks that are hanging in the window, sort of Pauline Hanson fashions, is what it made me think of. After we came back from a trip last year overseas, took the kids for a six week trip around Europe and then went to Pigalle in Paris, which was visually pretty exciting, and, and um, took some photos and did some drawings. And we came up with this corner in Paris here. It, run, it was a bit run down, but run down things always appeal to me. And um, the graffiti up the top really comes from all the graffiti we took photos of all around Italy and Barcelona and Paris. I found that part of the painting was suffering a bit, it was a bit dull. So I decided to put all the graffiti in up the top to save the top half of the picture using all the European graffiti we'd 
collected in the photographs um, on the trip, and it, I think it saved it. of a building that we stumbled upon once and again trying to get a car park to go shopping at the Victoria Market and we were driving around and around and went down a little side street and came across this incredible wedge of a building with a bright yellow sign down the middle and it, and it was quite stunning and I thought I'll do a painting about that. I've done three little paint, well, three paintings of Job Warehouse in the city in Burke Street. Um, yeah, most people know from Melbourne know what these shops uh, know these shops and um, the big bolts of material that have been there in the windows since God knows when. And it just visually looks stunning to me. And I had a lot of fun painting these big, colourful bolts of material. 